It's finally time to start putting finishing touches on our site, which means SEO optimizing it or search engine optimizing it. So this is really beginner stuff, and I'm sure all of you already know this, but just in case, we'll start with very basics. Um, keywords are basically ideas and topics that define what your content is about. In SEO speak, though, it's keywords are words or phrases searchers use to type into Google, aka search queries. All of the keywords on your website should be relevant to what people are searching for. You don't want to put irrelevant keywords on your pages because people will bounce from your site quickly, signaling to Google that the page is not relevant to whatever query they are searching for. What are the different types of keywords? There are two types of keywords, broad keywords and long tail keywords. Depending on who you talk to, though, there are more. We're just going to go over the broad keywords and the long tail keywords. So broad keywords are the short words or phrases that are not only apply to your industry and company, but also to just about every company in your industry or even companies in other industries. Long tail keywords are longer words or phrases that are more specific to your business or industry. As you can see on the screen, there's the broad keywords, which are usually just single words, um, which you wouldn't even know search or intent. And then there's the long tail keywords on the right, which are longer keywords, which you do have an idea of what people are searching for. Inbound marketing software, maybe they're looking for HubSpot. Um, Nike red running shoes, they want a specific pair of shoes. Uh, those are better to target because we can tell the searcher intent. So as you can see um, from this picture above. So long tail keywords are the keywords to target for many businesses because these are a lot easier to rank for, not to mention they also bring in the most relevant and qualified traffic. And I totally rather would have less traffic that's qualified than a lot of traffic that's not. Your client's goal may likely to be to rank for the broad keywords though because they have high search volumes. The problem is there's always usually extremely high competition and you don't know the searcher intent. For instance, do you think your online boutique is really going to outrank Zappos, Amazon, and Nordstrom for the keyword close? <laughs> Let's not be cry. On top of that, a broad keyword is completely vague and will likely result in tons of unqualified traffic, people who will never buy from you. For example, what the hell does someone mean who's searching dog? What do they want to know? I mean, I wouldn't even search that myself, actually. They could want a million different things. I like long tail keywords because it's usually much easier to define the searcher's intent behind their query. Long tail keywords are also perfect for blog post ideas. So broad keywords are general to your business, have a high search volume, and lots of competition. They're difficult to rank for and get traffic for. The visitors from these keywords are less likely to become leads as well. Long tail keywords are specific to your business, have low search volume, and little competition. These are easy to rank for and get traffic from. The visitors from these keywords are more likely to become leads as well. Hence the money emoji. Where should I put my primary keywords? Well, you should put unique keywords on each page of your site in the areas that bots and humans normally look to reassure them that you have what they're after. This would include your website slug or URL, the image alt tags, and the H1 tag on each page. They should be unique for each page. Also, in the back end, we're looking, there's the title tag and the meta description. Those should also have your primary keyword. All of the above will tell search engines what your content is actually about. Using your keywords in these areas is the most basic way to optimize your content. While it won't immediately shoot you to the top of SERPs, it's SEO one-on-one. -on -one. Feeling to take these simple steps could keep you from ranking, which is no bueno. Title tags are the second most important on-page factor for SEO after content. A title tag is an HTML element that specifies the title of a web page. The title tag of a web page is meant to be an accurate and concise description of a page's content. Title tags are used in three key places, search engine page results, web browsers, and social networks. This, uh, your title tag is what searchers see in the search engine page results and it's the first experience with your site. An optimized title can be the make or break factor in determining whether or not someone clicks on your link, which is obviously like really fucking important. Browser tabs. Your title tag is also displayed at the top of your web browser and acts as a placeholder, especially for people who have many browser tabs open, as I do. <laughs> Unique and easily recognizable titles with important keywords near the front make sure that people don't lose track of your content. 
Social networks. Some external websites, especially social networks, will use your title tag to determine what to display when they share that page. Here's a screenshot from Facebook, for example. Keep in mind that some social networks, including Facebook and Twitter, have their own meta tags, allowing you to specify titles that differ from your main title tag. This can allow you to optimize for each network and provide longer titles when and where they might be beneficial. How to write good title tags. You'll want an optimal format like primary keyword, dash, secondary keyword, brand name. An example of that would be 8 foot green widgets, dash, widget and tools, widget world. Optimal title length. Typically, Google shows the first 50 to 60 characters of a title tag. There's definitely tools out there if you Google like um, title tag or meta description, character count tool or something like that. It'll definitely come up and I'll link to it below. Title tag tips. Be careful with length. Just because you keep your title tag under 60 characters doesn't necessarily mean that your entire title will show on SERPs. You can use this free tool that I linked to below to see what it will look like in SERPs. Don't keyword stuff. If your title tag is something like best buy shoes, best shoes, cheap shoes, shoes for sale, it's bad for two reasons. For one, it creates a poor user experience. Steer clear of titles that are just a list of keywords, like the example I just shared. And for two, it could definitely get you into trouble with search engines. Search engines are smart. They understand keyword variations, so it's unnecessary to stuff different related queries in your title. Each page should have a unique title. Unique titles tell search engines that each page on your site is uniquely valuable and often drive higher click-through rates. Avoid default titles like home or new page and at all costs because they may lead Google to think your site has duplicate content. Additionally, default titles result in lower click-through rates. I mean, how often do you click on a site titled Hello World? <laughs> Not often. Place the most important keywords first. In SEO, it's a common fact that keywords closer to the beginning of your title positively affect your rankings and SERPs. And according to research, searchers scan as few as two words of a headline. Moz recommends avoiding titles like brand name, dash, major product category, dash, minor product category, dash, newer product. This example is putting repetitive, commonplace information in the spotlight, and search engines may even cut off titles like this. Utilize your brand. If your brand is well known, adding it to your titles may increase click-through rates. But don't put it at the front of the title regardless. Leave brand keywords toward the end. Your homepage and your about page may be the exceptions to this rule as they're more brand oriented. Keep your customers in mind. Always put the human before the search engine. Don't trick searchers with clickbait titles. It will just leave a bad taste in their mouth and they probably won't click through again if they see it. See your domain. URL. Use each page's focus keyword for the URL or slug, which is which is um, the ending of a the ending of your domain. So it would be like LaurenHoliday.com slash writing, which is my writing page. Meta description. While meta descriptions can be any length, search engines typically cut off snippets that are more than 160 characters. Keep your descriptions long enough to accurately describe the page, but within that 160 character limit. So we don't optimize meta descriptions for search engines either, as they don't affect search rankings. We optimize them to increase click-through rates from the search results. These descriptions are your chance to woo searchers into clicking on your link. You must create a compelling, directly relevant, unique description for humans while also including the targeted keyword. Don't include quotes or really an alphanumeric cat in your meta descriptions. Anytime you do, Google truncates that description at the quotation mark when it appears in the SERP. And as you can read above, meta descriptions are just HTML attributes that provide concise summaries of web, pa web pages. They appear underneath the blue clickable links in a SERP. So it's time to put your new knowledge to good use. Let's learn a bit more about optimizing our site for keywords. Keyword research is a core SEO task that involves identifying popular words and phrases people enter into search engines. They help you make an attempt to figure out what to rank for. Find the right keywords. It's certainly not just about finding high volume keywords to try and rank for. It's about exploring the right opportunities for your client based on search volume and the level of difficulty to rank for that keyword. It isn't just for SEO either. 
It's a massive part of content marketing as a whole. Keyword research helps you find great blog post ideas and learn more about your audience. I also link to a really good video on Moz by Rand Fishkin below, which um, I highly recommend you check out. And as you can see on the screen, this is an example of um, the monthly search volume on the far left and then the difficulty to rank for that keyword. Um, and that's a really hard keyword to rank for. That's just using the moz.com uh, tool, which is a paid tool, but it is so worth it. How to do keyword research. Step one. Start by brainstorming a long list of keywords. Here's a few different ways to find relevant keywords to seed your list with. Ask questions. Come up with an initial list of the products or services that you offer to, to your leads and customers. Try to focus on long tail keywords over broad keywords. If your company sells shoes, you should create a list of keywords that include all the different types of shoes you sell. It's the difference between shoes and Nike red running shoes. List the problems you solve for your audience. What problems do your prospects, leads, customers have that your company can help solve? Create a list of keyword phrases that matches the problems for which potential leads search for solutions. If your company sells iPhone cases that make an iPhone waterproof, your leads would probably be searching using keyword phrases like waterproof cases for iPhone or how do I waterproof my iPhone? How would you describe your business to someone who has never heard of your company? Leads might not know all the in industry keywords for your products or services. They will instead try searching using keywords that they are familiar with. Also, keep in mind that various keywords may vary in different parts of the world. For example, the terms that describe what your company does can vary by region. What is pop in one part of the world may be soda or cola in another part of the world. What common questions do your leads ask? Any of your salespeople should be able to tell you what questions their leads ask. Once you identify what these questions are, create a list of keywords that match all the different ways these questions can be asked. Leads typically have questions about what your products or services cost, what features they have, how they can purchase them, and what support your company offers. The next way would be to steal from competitors. <laughs> First, you would download the SEO Quake extension. Once activated, the SEO Quake extension will pop up next to the URL box in your browser. Now visit one of your competitor sites and you'll see this bar at the top of your screen. It'll look like this. Download the extension SEO Quake. It's just seoquake.com. Once you install it and it's activated, the SEO Quake extension will pop up next to the URL in your, in your browser. As you can see, I highlighted that in the screen showing right now. Um, with the blue box. Next, visit one of your competitor's sites and you'll see this bar at the top of your screen. In the, um, the one that's highlighted in the blue outline. Click on the I am purple below and a new tab will open that looks like this. In that blue box you'll see um, the title that the competitor uses, the meta keywords they're using for that page, and the meta description. Check out their titles, page descriptions, and keyword tags. Those are the most important. Next, look at related searches. So type in a bunch of ideas and then look at what they are. Scroll to the bottom of Google and look at the related searches. You can also use Moz or Ahrefs or another keyword tool. This is Moz's back end and I just um, put in like massage and then you can go down um, below and you'll see keyword suggestions. Click that and it'll give you a long list of keywords with how relevant they are for your business and the search volume. And then you can click on them and get even more information. Next, ubersuggest.org. So this, I just typed in cupcake bakery, then hit look up. And from there, it took me to this, uh, 928 keyword ideas found for cupcake bakery. And you can see the search volume and kind of sort by that with those little arrows. And then you can also export the list, if you like, into an Excel spreadsheet. You can also use keyword.io, which is just like um, Uber Suggest. And this is how the search results come up when uh, you look. Like, you can see people are looking for baby cupcakes near me, baby shower cupcakes near me. Those ones seem to be popular. 
and you can also export this list as well. You can also use another similar tool called Answer the Public, which gives you like a bunch of questions that people will ask based on the keywords you enter. So here's um, a list. Here's like, there's a lot more than this and what you'll see as results, but this is just some of the data you'll see. You can also look at it as a visualization. See, like, can cupcakes be made without eggs? Can cupcakes be left out? Um, these are all like either frequently asked questions or like blog post ideas. There's also um, this really good resource, Backlinko's Brian Dean, that I'll link to below that I highly recommend reading. So next, you want to filter down your list with a keyword tool. I use Moz, but you can use other keyword tools like Ahrefs, Serpstat, and SEMrush. There should be free tiles you can use to get the information you need for like a month. Find the right keywords. To find the right keywords, you need to pay attention to search volume, the number of times people type this search query into Google per month, and then the competition and difficulty for each one. How difficult on a scale from 0 to 100 is that keyword query rank for? This is what it looks like in Moz. You type in the keyword like Evernote, Notebook, Stack, and then at the top it'll say the monthly volume, give you the difficulty of how, much, how hard that'll be to rank, and then the opportunity for you and the priority you should make it based on those um, things. And then you can also go below and click search uh, keyword suggestions and get more keywords in their monthly volume or go to the right and see the SERP analysis and see what content's already ranking for that keyword and if you can make it better. You can use this keyword template to help you. Just make a copy in Google Drive to work on it yourself and you'll see an example from a former client. I link to that below too. Once you've completed your spreadsheet, which I just linked to or showed you, it's time to input those titles, descriptions, and focus keywords you wrote on each page of your WordPress website. Here's how you do it. First, you install Yoast SEO. I've tested a lot of different SEO plugins and my favorite is Yoast. I used to use all-in-one SEO. I like Yoast better and I recommend Yoast to you because it has more SEO features so we can download fewer plugins and if you remember that saves us page loading time. So to get to Yoast you're going to go to plugins on the left hand side. You're going to click add new and then you're going to go to the search bar which is under the, the number two in the screen and you'll type in Yoast SEO. It'll be the first result and you'll click install and then you'll click activate once the installing's done. It should take like less than a minute. Go to the top of your dashboard now, and you'll see a Y, which stands for Yoast. <laughs> and then you'll click the Configuration Wizard. Then you'll get to this page, and you'll click the Configure Yoast SEO on the left. And this will walk you through the whole process for setting up the main SEO of your site, which is really easy. Then you'll go to Pages, All Pages, and then for each page, um, you know, just select it. Select Edit. So I started with baked reviews, but you'd have to do this for blog. You'd have to do this for cupcake classes, cupcakes. You know, I'd have to do this for every page that's live on my site. Then look below Visual Composer, and you'll see Yoast SEO. Click the drop-down arrow. Then click on Edit Snippet. And once you click on Edit Snippet, it you'll see um, that the SEO title drops down, the slug drops down, and the meta description drops down. So write your SEO title in the proper, um, you know, in the SEO title box. Then write your slug, which is the ending of your URL. So since mine, let's say, is like baked.com, then I'd write. So I'd write baked.com slash baked reviews or baked.com slash reviews, depending on what keyword I researched and decided on for that. Then I'd write the meta description. And you can see... Then I close the snippet editor, and you can see what highlighted in purple that you can see how it looks on mobile and then how it looks on desktop. So you can see if um, your description or title or anything gets cut off. Then below, you'll see a focus keyword, which you'll type in your unique keyword phrase for this page, the one that the primary keyword phrase that you're targeting for this. You can ignore this, artic this article as cornerstone content for right now. Then below, all the way at the bottom, you'll see um, ways to improve it. So you don't, this doesn't always have to be perfect, but it is helpful sometimes. So just like read it and see, uh, make sure 
you know, you're not missing anything that you could fix. So we're done for now, and it's time to deliver your site back to your client, which I'll explain how to do in the next section. Get ready.